Hello guys, this is Brian here with the update video. Today is July 5th, Tuesday, 2016. So here are some updates um, what's been going on. Um, I finally have a HMO appeal panel hearing thing for next week, next Thursday. It was supposed to be done this week, but the, they can't do it. You know, the doctor can't do it. And that's the reason why she kind of took so long to get back with me uh, with the date and time. Oh, that's all I'll let you know about that. Um, a health problem popped up in the last couple weeks, but I would say three weeks, is pain shooting down my neck into my shoulders. Then it starts up uh, on the side of the arm and go up to these three fingers. Um, so, uh, last week I made my appointment to go see the spine doctor and then the uh, neurologist, because I didn't know which one does the nerve test. I know for sure the neurologist does, because I had one back in December. Uh, but I went ahead and followed up with the spine doctor, just in case. Um, you know, kill two birds with one stone type of situation. And I received a letter on Friday from them, the spine doctor. Let me know that that doctor's leaving the practice effective July the 8th. And they didn't tell me on the phone. And what? And I went today. Today's Tuesday. I went to him today. Uh, they, he, he is ordering an MRI of my upper back. Uh, and I think the neck. I can't be. It was so much, so much going on in there. In the little room. Um. He doesn't believe, he, he doesn't think it's, the disc is pushing against the nerve. Uh, I, I disagree with that. I, I think it is. Um, he called it, what did he call it? Uh, let me look up my, my piece of paper here. Because the last nerve test I had done with a neurologist, the nerve test, they, they thought I might have um, very moderate uh, uh, carpal tunnel because of that. Uh, let's see here. Okay, uh, he, he thinks the symptoms are related to the ULNAR nerve in the arm to the fingers, the three, these three fingers, ULN, ULNAR nerve. And he said if that's the case, uh, there's only a couple options for that, either do injections or, or open up the nerve. <laughs> Uh, but he said, I asked him about neck surgery, I, and he doesn't seem to think if I had neck surgery that I would have any kind of relief. I don't know. Uh, well, anyways, I, I totally forgot to ask him where we're going so I could follow him. Totally forgot. So I went up to that checkout window, and the lady said, well, we're not allowed to tell patients anything about that. He's going to private practice. You just have to... Because apparently... Is, this is Frisco Spine, so it's, they have multiple clinics, and that really ticks me off big time. Um, I think that's unethical, and he didn't bring, and he didn't even tell me at, the, at my appointment. Well, I got the letter, but he never brought it up during the appointment too. Uh, so apparently, he's a nice guy, but apparently. I don't know, to me, if a doctor was, you know, if a doctor's leaving, you may want to tell your patient so you could, you know, you can uh, retain them. Uh, but I don't know, since it's a, you know, those multiple clinic type of things, you know, a group practice, I don't know, if there, uh, maybe he signed a thing that he can't do that, I guess, recruit patients, basically. But to me, that's unethical. You should tell your patients if you're going somewhere else and they can follow you for course of treatment, not another doctor. Uh, so I called Blue Cross and Blue Shield and asked him about that because the HMO referral, the 
Because in the old days, to my understanding, because some people have told me in the old days of HMOs, the HMO referral was good for the specialty, not the particular physician. But nowadays, it, it's based on the particular physician. So if that physician's name is not on when they sent that claim to the insurance company, it's, it, they won't pay for it, apparently. That's what the lady at the Blue Cross said. So she said either the specialist or the uh, primary care doctor has to call them and switch it over or make a new referral. Uh, so this is where it might be a problem. And I, and luckily, I, if I do have it what, when they call me up for my MRI, I'm going to I'm gonna think I'm just going to have to wait a couple of weeks until I get word from Blue Cross. Because if, a, if the doctor, if they switch the name and the old doctor's order, well, of course, it's, I think it's, it is going to be the old doctor's name on the MRI. And they have a referral for a new doctor. Oh, my God. I can't imagine what chaos that's going to cause. Um, uh, that, that, that is the only problems I have with the cross in HMOs. All this HMO barricades. Other than that, it's okay. But I prefer a PPO. Um, so I'm really ticked off that they can't. And, and it was my fault too for not bringing it up during their appointment. But, you know, they have a nurse in there typing away, the doctor asking you questions and questions and questions and examining you, uh, going over my medications and all that. But they should at least tell their patients where he's going. Um, I, I think that's really unethical um, in my view. Uh, so I do have an appointment with a neurologist uh, Thursday. And he did say it's a good idea to have an EMG test anyway. I, I knew that last week. Um, so I'm having that done in the office. Now, <laughs> that was another fiasco of Blue Cross about that. I called him on Friday and asked them, is EMG test still covered? Because I went from PPO to HMO, and it was okay underneath the PPO policy. No problem there. But HMOs... Or stricter about things, and 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 it's been done in office. So I I didn't know if it required authorization or anything like that. Uh, I called across the first lady I spoke with said yes, you have to have a special referral just for the test. She claims that the specialist cannot order any kind of tests without a special referral from the primary care doctor. The HMO referral is just good for office consultations only. No other thing else. Nothing else. I said, ma'am, that's incorrect. Because I have had an MRI done from a specialist without a special HMO referral. I already have a referral. So, no, you know, not a referral for the particular test. I've had lab work done by both specialists without any kind of referral. And then she was kind of, she was trying to explain herself out of it. Okay, well, I'll call back the second time. Uh, and I got uh, I got over supervisor now. Apparently, with Blue Cross, since Obamacare kicked in, all these people who answer the phone are first tier people. They're not employees of the insurance company. Third party contractors. You know, a third party con call center. Because one time earlier this year, I asked for a supervisor, and the lady transferred me immediately. To, she hit the transfer button too soon, apparently, and the recording came on and said, this is the, the Crossword Shield Escalations line. <laughs> um, so. so I got hold of a supervisor. She said, no, the HMO referral that you, that you have is good for it. You know, the, the specialist can order anything. The primary care doctor doesn't need to be involved in that. You know, uh, since you have a referral, However, she did have the transmit to the prompt authorization, but she didn't require any kind of prompt authorization since it has been done in the office and it did not. So I'm good there. And plus the uh, the lady from the because I called them about that yet yeah, on Friday uh, Friday afternoon, and the lady called back at the doctor's office and did confirm that they called the insurance company themselves um, because I do not want to get stuck with the thousand dollar bill and, you know, the, the, I think they charge my insurance company to three thousand and 
I mean, Blue Cross paid out around 800, 2000, somewhere around there. Um, so I'm good there. But I'm really tucked off about the spine doctor. Um, so in a couple of weeks or in August sometime after I get my MRI done when I see this new spine doctor, um, hopefully he may have change of plan, you know, maybe it's a blessing disguise, never know about that. Um, what else, what's been going on? That's pretty much it on the health front. Um... Oh, Saturday, I thought I was passing the kidney stone. I think I did uh, because, it, you know, pain. And then very, very bad burning of urination. Um, so I, and I totally forgot at work, we had this Teladoc benefit. You know, no charge for us. You know, it's just a paid company benefit. Uh, and I did one of those Teladoc things and... And they, because I knew I had a prescription for the Paradigm medicine, you know, the little orange tablet, a rust color tablet you take, it makes you pee turn orange and brown and rust. Uh, so you don't, you don't, you don't need does that burn or that. I thought maybe I have a UTI, either one. Um, and I knew I had a big bottle of it because uh, the, um, uh, because I had to, kid, you know, when I had that other kidney stone, you know, the doctor gave me a whole bunch of it. And, I, and for life, I mean, I cannot find that damn bottle anywhere in this house. Um, and usually I save medication like that in case I need it again. Um, but luckily I had that teledoc and they called, you know, they called the, and some, you know, I think he called in four or five days worth. Uh, so I kind of taped off of it today, and it doesn't seem to burn as much. So I don't know if it, it also called me back drum to take. So I don't know if it is a UTI or if I did pass the kidney stone and it scraped the walls of the um, tube. <laughs> um, um, and if, if I have any more pain or burning, I'm, I'm going to make a appointment with the primary care doctor. Uh, now, get this. While I was researching uh, Saturday, um, and, I, and I found out today, but we, when I did search for urologist here where I live in my county, it was one. So I'll call the number up today because it listed multiple addresses and asked me, well, where in the hell are you looking at? Well, I call the number right say the doctor is no longer in practice, uh, that he moved off to California. So they made no urologist in my county at all. I would have to, if I had to go to a urologist, I had to travel all the way down to Dallas at Presbyterian Hospital at Dallas where the Ebola happened. The, you know, the Ebola guy. Um, so I'm, I'm ticked off about Blue Cross about that no urologist in my whole entire county for the HMO. Now, they have plenty of PP on the PPO plan. Um, because my old, my urologist I had doesn't want to take the HMO. Um, and I, and I'm going to call the Texan tomorrow and the insurance about that because Blue Cross Blue Shield here in Texas, they operate in every single county where other insurance companies don't. And I think they have to have a specialty in the county, at least one specialist in each county, since they as they as they operate in each county. I'm gonna call them sometime and ask them about that. Um, and that's all because Obamacare. I, I tell you what, this Obamacare is a total disaster. Um, because I'm, I'm thinking, well, if I leave Blue Cross and go through, you know, if I go to Cigna, um, Aetna, Aetna has decent plans, but no doctors will take the damn thing, or no hospitals will either. Uh, but Cigna, pretty decent, but the prescription copays is a little bit high. I mean, they're not, the higher tiers are not copays, they're percentages, you know, like coinsurance. And larger out of pocket, um, but it's a PPO, um, same as 
Baylor Scott and White Health plan. Their prescriptions, the higher tiers, are more, um, are more, uh, out of, more higher and out of pocket and larger out of pocket too. Versus Blue Cross. Um, if I if I jump off of Blue Cross, and if if Presbyterian Hospital System does not sign it with any other insurance companies. Uh, that means I would have to go to Crappy Leg Point, which is 10 own healthcare, where I have my back and neck injections done. I don't like them. Can't stand them. The outpatient procedure was enough. Or I have to go to Baylor or Garland. I don't like that. Um, which is 13 miles away. Um, and I like Presbyterian Hospital System here. <laughs> Very big, good care. Plus, they have emergency room never a mile away from here. Um, and and also according to Aetna, so I mean they have a hospital. I think like thir uh, uh, they do participate in Baylor, uh, Baylor Garland. But guess what? On the little thing it says, no contract anesthesiologists, no contracted with emergency room physicians, no contracted radiologists. So what's the point of going to that damn hospital when you can't have anything contract? You know, you get large bills. I, I don't know, folks. This is a fucking disaster. It's only going to get worse because no one is either the either the doctors and hospitals are getting will super low reimbursement, and I think that's what's happening. I, I, I don't know, and yet on the news, Blue Cross wants to raise premiums up to forty to fifty percent higher again this year, um, because they're projected to lose seven hundred million dollars this year. But yet, their healthcare service corporation, who owns Texas, Oklahoma, Illinois, Montana, New Mexico, uh, the big company, is hoarding nine. I think they said nine point nine or ten billion dollars in just in reserves, in reserves, and they don't pay no taxes because they're a um, tax exempt corporation. What a BS! Um, so I'd like to know how in the hell it can how can an insurance company such that justify rate hikes when they're sitting on piles of cash. Well, and especially when they're not, uh, especially when they're uh, tax exempt insurance company versus for profit. Um, and then you know, I, I, and you know, I might go with Cigna. Who knows? But I have always heard about Cigna bad customer service with Cigna, and I always have, always have heard that people have tons and tons and tons of problems of getting claims paid right with Cigna. If anybody has Cigna out there, let me know. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't have any problems with claims on Blue Cross. It's just this crappy customer service um, about that. But, you know, the good old days, you go into the doctor's office and you just say, Hey, Blue Cross here, Blue Cross. Not anymore. <laughs> I mean, that was like a gold card to these doctors. You know, Blue Cross, <laughs> get me in. <laughs> um, but not anymore. Uh, they're like, Ugh, you have Obamacare <laughs> plan, go away. <laughs> um, I don't know. We're either going uh, to end up eventually by 2020. I could predict this. By year 2020, there won't be no PPOs. It's all going to be HMOs. Or either that we end up on single payer, um, and the, somehow the, the insurance companies won't let that go. Somehow they're gonna get cahooted into that and doing that business. Um, so, well, that's all. That's all I know right now. So if you have any questions or comments, please post them below and let me know if they have Cigna. Uh, let me know your experience with Cigna. I'm kind of thinking about that. However, if I do choose them and if Presbyterian does assign the contract with them. I would have to use Baylor Scott and White or Tenant Healthcare Hospitals. Um, so, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.